。好，二零一六年嘅第二条题目啦，就系、是、讲人体繁殖嘅。今次呢条题目咧都非常之直白噶啦。我哋先係見得到啦，成個子宮入面嘅結構啦，同埋啦有一個 X 嘅位置嘅，咁呢個係個胎啦。咁 Part A 啦就直接問啦，喺呢個 X 嘅位置呢、這個空間啊入面嘅液體係乜嘢呢？而 Part B 呢，就要我哋喺返幅圖上面去標示一個位置，呢、這個位置呢，就係容許阿仔嘅血同埋阿媽嘅血呢進行。物質交換嘅究竟喺咩地方呢？咁 Part A 同埋 Part B 呢，其實就係考返我哋對於羊水啦，同埋胎盤嘅功能嘅理解啦。咁啊，過往都係 MC 呢去講返胎盤嘅功能嘅。咁啊，大家温書嘅時候呢，快快睇返咯噃。咁啊 ，Part A 啦，呢一啲液體係咩呢？自不然就係羊水啦。Part B 啦，究竟邊一個嘅結構係容許阿媽同阿仔嘅血去進行一個物質交換呢？嗱，留意喎，係阿媽同阿仔嘅血入面嘅物質交換。唔系阿妈同阿仔嘅血去交换，而呢个容许物质交换嘅位置咧就系胎盘啦。好去到 Part C 啦，就要我哋讲翻两个原因去解释翻阿仔嘅血同埋阿妈嘅血咧，点解一定要分开？嗱，最基本嘅事实我哋都真系知道嘅，阿妈同阿仔嘅血咧系胎盘咧系冇捞埋一齐嘅，佢哋各自都系翻自己嘅血管去流动嘅啫。所以呢条题目咧就系考翻我哋胎盘嘅重要性。今次嘅重要性就系讲紧，当阿妈同阿仔嘅血分开嘅同时，又会容许到物质嘅交换。啊，点解咁神奇嘅呢？所以呢条题目咧系考紧我哋有关于胎盘如何解难啊。所以呢条题目咧都系考大家逆向思维嘅。试想一下，阿仔嘅血同阿妈嘅血真系捞埋嘅话，阿妈嘅血管同阿仔嘅血管真系直接搏住对方嘅，究竟会发生啲咩事呢？第一个啦，就系唔兼容嘅血型啦。阿妈同阿仔嘅血唔一定相同血型嘅。如果唔兼容嘅血捞埋，亦即系好似捐错血一样啦，就会有血液嘅结块。所以胎盘将阿妈同阿仔嘅血分开咧，就系避免到血液结块啦。第二啦，有关于身体防卫啦。如果阿妈同阿仔嘅血直接捞埋嘅话，有啲细菌啊、病毒啊或者毒素喺阿妈嘅血度出现嘅时候，咪会直接俾咗个仔咯。所以胎盤嘅功能就係將阿媽同阿仔嘅血分開，就避免咗啲病原體啊、毒素啊，直接由阿媽嘅血入咗阿仔嘅血啦。嗱，所以個 key word 咧就係直接啦。咁你話點解一定要直接呢個字呢？因為啦，即使個胎盤佢就真係將阿媽同阿仔血分開啦，會見得到啦，阿仔嘅血咧就胎盤嘅微血管咧入面去運送嘅啫。問題就係話，如果有一啲病毒佢係好細粒，例如啦 HIV。導致到艾滋病嘅嗰只病毒，呢只咁細嘅病毒可以穿過微血管嘅血管壁嘅，佢就會傳咗俾個仔咯。所以我哋要講嘅咧，係避免直接嘅感染。去第三啦，就係血壓嘅問題啦。如果阿媽同阿仔嘅血管係直接搏住嘅，邊個俾養分阿仔啊？係阿媽啊嘛，即係話啦，由阿媽咁強嘅心臟一泵血。就是、一个好高压嘅压力就直接泵落个仔度，嗱泵落个仔度系冇乜问题嘅，但系泵落个 embryo 嗰树，大佬唔好意思，我当初得十六个 cell， 得三廿二个 cell， 好似打保龄球咁一嘢冲爆个 cell， 我死硬噶，咁所以啦，阿妈同阿仔嘅血分开系有道理嘅，但系分开咗，我哋仍然要容许到物质交换，呢、这个就系胎盘嘅适应性特征啦。好，又嚟到一点出发啦。今次嘅题目呢，就由怀孕做起点嘅，考我哋嘅呢，主要两个结构，一个系羊水，一个就係胎盘啦。咁羊水嘅基本功能，今次佢冇问你嘅，下次可能会问你啦。而羊水呢个概念呢，亦都反映咗人类嘅胎呢，係喺母体入面呢去成长嘅，從而引申出嚟嘅概念呢，将人类嘅胚胎或者个胎嘅成长同鱼类啦。两栖类啦、爬虫类啦，同埋鸟类咧去比较，其中一副比较就系比较个卵子嘅大细啦。鸡蛋系咁大只嘅，人嘅卵子咧系细粒好多嘅。大家都系卵子，人类嘅卵子咁细粒，但系鸡嘅卵子系咁大粒咧，当中一定有原因嘅。咁啊，因为牵涉咗佢哋系咪喺母体嘅子宫入面去成长啦。一只鸡蛋之所以咁大，系因为佢要储存足够嘅嘢食，俾只鸡仔喺个鸡蛋入面去成长。但系我哋住喺阿媽嘅子宮入面就唔緊要啦，因為阿媽係會俾養分我哋噶嘛，係咪？跟住去到胎盤啦，有關於胎盤嘅適應性特徵，你又清唔清楚呢？磁帶有咩功能呢？磁帶入面有磁動物同埋磁靜物，究竟佢哋運血嘅方向係如何呢？今次嘅題目可以有咩變奏啊？佢一問下你，磁動物同埋磁靜物，佢所運送嘅血嘅血液成分，究竟有咩唔同呢？氧气啊，二氧化碳啊，葡萄糖或者尿素。咁之前两 s i 都拍咗段片噶啦，就是、有关于血管嘅定义。
就帮我哋去判断喺呢条血管入面嘅血液成分啦。咁想温书嘅呢，快快又睇返咯。呢、這、条、個、题目呢，佢都冇问你嘅，下次可以问嘅就係产前诊断啦。我哋可以喺羊水去抽取翻胎儿嘅細胞，喺个細胞入面抽取翻佢哋嘅染色体，从而去观察佢哋嘅核型，去睇下佢哋有冇任何嘅染色体突变。例如，例如如果我哋发现咗佢嘅第二十一对嘅染色体系多咗一条嘅。即系呢个小朋友系患上唐氏综合症啦。One six question two is about human reproduction. This question is very straightforward. So you can see that this diagram shows a fetus and the associated structure inside the uterus. We can see the cavity X and the fetus. Part A: What is the fluid found in the cavity X? Part B: On the diagram, label the structure where the exchange of the materials between the fetal blood and the maternal blood takes place. So remember that it's talking about the exchange of the material between the fetal blood and the maternal blood, not talking about the exchange of the fetal blood and the maternal blood. That's the definitely different concept. So for part A and part B, it checks our concept about the amniotic fluid in the amnion and record the function of the placenta. You can check the MC before for the revision. So for part A, the fluid is amniotic fluid, very straightforward. And what's the structure where the exchange of the material between the fetal blood and the maternal blood takes place? That's the placenta. For part C, give two reasons why the fetal blood has to be separate from the maternal blood. This question recalls the importance of the placenta. Talking about the problem solving by the placenta, and it also checks our reverse thinking. Imagine that what if the fetal blood and the maternal blood they really mix together? So what is the problem, and how does the placenta solve such problems? The first problem: incompatible blood group for the mother and the fetus. It's not necessary for them to have the same blood group. So you can recall the concept from the basic genetics. So what about they have incompatible blood group and the fetal blood and the maternal blood they really mix together? It will cause the blood clumping. It's just like the case of the incompatible blood donation. Therefore, we have to separate the fetal blood and the maternal blood. Secondly, it's about the body defense. Imagine that the blood vessel of the mother and the fetus they really connect together. So that means any germs, any virus, any toxin in mother's blood, it will be transported to the fetal's blood directly. It will cause direct infection. So that's why the importance of the placenta to separate the blood in order to prevent the entry of the some pathogens or the toxin from the maternal blood directly. You have to recall the terms directly. Why is it so necessary? Because in the real case. We really have the placenta to separate the maternal blood and the fetal blood. However, there are some virus or the pathogens. They are so small, so they can pass through the capillary wall of the embryo's capillary to enter the fetal's body. Surely, it's the unfavorable case. However, it's still better than mixing the fetal blood and the maternal blood together. And for the third case, it's about the blood pressure. By、like、the case I have mentioned, imagine the blood vessel of the fetus and the mothers really connect together. You need to think about this question: Who is the one to provide the nutrients to the fetus? Of course, mother. That means the mother's heart will pump the blood to the embryos. So imagine that. So it's easy to think about that. The heart muscle of the mother it must be stronger than the heart muscle of the fetus. It will need to the breakage of the fetal's blood vessel, the arteries, the vein, and the capillaries. So they cannot withstand such high blood pressure at the very beginning. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. This question it starts from pregnancy. The question asks about amniotic fluid and the placenta. For the amniotic fluid, surely we need to recall the function of it. This may be asked in the MC or short question. Based on the concept of amniotic fluid, it gives us an insight about the human fetus. We are growing up inside the mother's uterus, so it leads to another concept. It's talking about the comparison among the fish, amphibian, reptiles, birds, and human being, or what we so-called the mammals. If you can recall the concept, all of them, the fetus, they are growing outside the mother's body, just like the chicken. The chicken will lay the egg. One thing we can compare is the size of the egg. The chicken egg is that big, but the human egg is very small. The question is. Why is the human egg so small, and why is the chicken egg so big? Reason is that because the chicken, the birds, they grow up, they develop outside mother's uterus. 
On the other hand, we are growing up inside mother's uterus. It means that our mother will keep providing us the nutrients for us to grow up. However, for the chicken, they need to grow up inside the egg. Therefore, the egg it needs to contain all the nutrients for the chicken to grow up. And for the placenta, any additive features you can recall? And what about the umbilical cord? And for the umbilical cord, there are umbilical arteries and umbilical vein. So for this question, any possible question variation. So we need to compare the blood content in the umbilical arteries and umbilical veins. So in the past, I have made a video about the definition, the terminology of the blood vessels. And it helps us to determine the blood content in that particular blood vessels. So let's do the revision together. From the pregnancy topic, there is another concept we can talk about. That's the prenatal diagnosis. We extract the amniotic fluid and find the cells of the the fetus and then we extract the chromosome of the fetus to study the karyotype. It's a way for us to determine if the fetus is suffering from any chromosomal mutation. For example, if we can find three chromosomes in the 21st pair, that means this child, he or she, will suffer from Down syndrome.